my one night stand as a guru. After hours sat saying, most never heard the word, but a few had, even though our music, dance, trance show had nothing to do with non-duality. Maybe a dozen of the 30 to 40 people at the show came back to listen to me. More spoke English than I imagined, but we still had translation, so there were long pauses that were almost meditative. I hardly know what I said, but noticed myself switching from one perspective to another, almost hearing my voice say words I'd heard from this or that non-dual speaker. I think there was a little confusion at one point, so I told them I needed a pee break and deliberately walked very slowly and gracefully to the exit, aware of trying to move like a spiritual person. I felt totally lost. All those eyes on me, some really staring, and this mind-blowingly beautiful German blonde girl with flowers in her hair, making little sounds after almost everything I said and nodding. There was one old guy with a gray beard, but mostly they were young. A few guys up front would stare at me, look back at Peter who was translating, and then sort of grunt at me or look at each other and nod. The whole thing was surreal and not fun. I wanted to go outside, but I came back in. The show must go on, so the satsang must go on, right? I sat back down and felt everyone's eyes on me. It was so different than being watched when I dance. Never expected that. When I dance, I'm aware of the audience, but even when I can see them, it feels like when I move, they feel they're moving too. A professor once told me it was mirror neurons. I don't know. But just sitting in front of a crowd was nothing like that. I felt they were just part of this dream and not any more solid than I was but that was not helping. Though there was a sense of wondering, what is Miranda going to do next? I closed my eyes and stayed quiet for a while. I thought of how Lisa used to do that, except I did it to buy time. I took some deep breaths and tilted my head back so they could all see I was deep in meditative, non-dual contemplation. When I was backstage, it came to me to talk about love. I opened my eyes and looked at them without speaking until the fragile, dreamlike nature of each one of them became so clear, I almost started to cry. Then it came out, my love stuff. You've all heard it, so no need to try to remember what I said. I had to keep stopping as Peter reminded me to pause for translation, but it just flowed. It's all love. You're not separate. It's all made of love. Something like that. After it felt finished, I stopped and had tears in my eyes. I wanted to have some violin during the satsang, but our violinist wanted to listen. They all seemed sure I should be sitting still while I talked, so my idea of a more rock and roll satsang with music and dancing was not happening. I looked at everyone. Our violinist was crying and gave me a weak smile. A few others were teary and some had the same look as after seeing our show, so I guess it had gone well. 
I knew it was time for questions because the guru always ends with questions. I've seen that on YouTube. The German girl said she felt like she did at Love Fest, full of love. One guy said he was very confused and had about some things I had said. The German girl and a couple of others got upset with him, defending me, and as best as I could tell with the language barriers, they were saying it was beautiful and pure, or something like that. I noticed he quieted down and almost apologized to me. Then one of the guys up front asked some long questions that Peter simply translated it as, why do you not tell us about the true nature of consciousness? Someone else wanted to know how to attain enlightenment. I told them there were no separate things. No one becomes enlightened and that consciousness is just another thought. I was now mixing up things from Nancy and LMA and Lisa and who knows what else. I even told them that some say that when this is seen, everything is said to be unconditional love, though I doubted I sounded very convincing. It wasn't like answering questions online, when I have time and can get second opinions. Plus I danced and was exhausted. It seemed like my brain was just regurgitating what it had heard all the words stored there coming out all scrambled. I really felt like a computer program, but isn't that how it really is all the time? Somehow my answers seemed okay enough to stop the questions, until the old guy asked why there is evil in the world. Old guy, why are you doing this to me? I said, there is no evil in the world, and there is no good in the world. There is no world. Yeah, really, I said that. I stared at him, and he didn't press it. And when one of the young guys got agitated after that translation, Peter thankfully said our time was up. The German girl and a few others gave me great big long hugs and thanked me. They wanted to keep talking, but I begged off as I needed to get to bed and had enough of pretending to be a guru for one night or one lifetime. Later, Peter said a few of them wanted to come hear me again while we were in town. We got some donations. They go to our overall expenses, not to me. The seeing is free, for now anyway. I had to disappoint Pater by telling him I didn't think I'd be doing that again. We didn't really need the money, but he seemed disappointed. He said I was really an inspiration and opened his mind. To what, I didn't ask. I felt like a con artist who realizes they can get away with their con game. I could see how it starts. And I can see from just one sample why some non-duality speakers move into kinder and gentler territory. Gotta keep the customer satisfied, sure, but there's a feeling of wanting to make people happy make them feel loved. They all seemed so innocent, like a bunch of little lost kittens. I just wanted to cry and hug each one of them and find them all nice homes and keep them warm and safe. I also know that after a while, I'd want to rip them apart and yell at them like UG. So, enough said. Love from the guru who wasn't there, Miranda Rama.